In this tutorial, I'm going to walk through the process of actually beginning to add content to your e-learning lesson that we've been creating throughout this workshop. Before we begin, I want to emphasize the importance of having a good lesson plan and a good instructional design plan before we actually begin developing. So what I've done here is I've done some of that work and I've actually transferred some content into a document here. And so this document has information that is chunked out and it's, it's presented in, in small increments. So we learned about the segmenting principle. That's kind of what's going on here. And so I have that ready to go. And I also want to begin looking at maybe how I want to break this content out in the lesson. So um, using Word, if I go in, I can kind of highlight some, some content here. And then I'm going to choose the Review tab in Word and then add a comment. I may say Screen 1 or I could even just say screen so I know that that's kind of the the information that I want to go together so if I find that maybe I want to readjust that I can right click on that delete the comment and then maybe reassign how I want that screen grouped so as we work throughout the lesson you'll want to work with a document that has done some pre-planning and you're ready to go and apply that to your to your screen layouts so I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I'm going to return to the actual uh, e-learning lesson. So you'll notice that we have some, some content here that is, uh, that's ready, or some screens that are ready to go. Um, I actually want to go and apply the, the screen templates and the layouts to the amount of content that I'm going to be working with. So in this example, I'm just going to be working with four screens, but I also want to, uh, to reiterate that when you're actually building your lesson, you may be dealing with more. So on the first slide that we're doing here, uh, we're going to work with, it's actually going to be the first slide of our lesson. And so it has one next button, which is good, and we have a full content area, which is what I want as well. So on this other screen here, I'm going to go ahead and delete that out, we'll add that back in in just a moment. Uh, this other screen is a full content area, but it has a next and back button. So again, that will work well as too. I'm going to go ahead and right click and select new slide to add a new one, a new slide to there. And But I want to change the layout. I'm going to use a split screen layout with the next and back button. And I'm going to add one more slide to work with. And this time I'm going to use the uh, split screen with next and back as well. And then the final slide in the, the presentation, I want to function as the summary slide, which um, I'm going to use a full content area with the back button. So I just selected those from the, from the layout list. And now once I have my main content layout, I'm ready to begin adding uh, content to the lesson. So I've gone through and I'm, I've highlighted the information here and I'm going to highlight the information and so I can copy it directly in here. Now when I'm bringing in text I want to select in the text area right click and then select the A icon and what this does is that copies it in using the formatting that is in the e-learning lesson not the formatting that was used in a whatever development document. So I'm going to actually name this slide Overview. And once I've got that content there, I'm ready to move on. So for the next slide, I'm going to pull up my content here. And here I'm going to be working with a video. So uh, what I'm going to do is actually, in just a moment, show you how we're going to integrate that video. But I'm going to call this slide Don Norman's Video. Okay, now, so if I have the video, I, I have the, the the link there that I want to use, and I actually have that video pulled up here in YouTube. What I've done is I've enabled the uh, embed code, and I'm actually using the old embed code here. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to return to PowerPoint. Then under the insert menu, I'm going to choose the video drop down and say video from website. I'm going to copy that uh, that code in there and select insert. Now what I've done here is I've actually added this video to the slide and it will it's a placeholder now but when it is actually published it will display that. And I'm moving the video around a little bit. Occasionally you'll find situations where you will need to move content around and that's perfectly okay. You'll just want to make sure that it's consistent. Now there was a little bit of text that actually went with this video so I'm going to go ahead and select the text box and I can draw a new text area on here to support that. Now if you're going to be doing a lot of content 
um, you may consider actually building in a template to, to address for that. So again, I'm going to copy that content and return to PowerPoint. And going to replace that. Now notice sometimes when we do that we may need to resize the text a little bit since it's a not a part of the template so we can adjust that and reposition it on the screen. So now that we've added our our video we're ready to go to the to the next slide. This one's going to be titled about the workshop. I'm going to copy that content Let me go to this the right the left text area and copy that text in. Now, when I'm when I'm ready to actually add some images to there, there's a couple ways I can do this. I could add a, a table, I could add a chart or graph, smart art, an actual image from your computer. I could also add some clip art or a video as we've or a media clip as we've just seen. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just choose some some clip art options there, and I'm going to type in Notepad. Microsoft Word will search that. I'm going to select a picture of a notepad and go ahead and click insert. Now what that does is it automatically replaces that content area with that picture. So once I've added that content, I'm going to go to the next slide. I'm going to return to my content document and this one's going to be called instructional methods. Go ahead and type that in. And this to illustrate that we can uh, put any sort of content in any of these boxes, I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And here I'm going to go ahead and select the, the clip art again. And I'm going to choose teacher. And I'm going to go ahead and select this image to be placed in there. And again, it automatically places it in that box. Now, sometimes you may want to go ahead and rearrange and, and replace some of the images. That's completely fine. It's going to be looking at those, those visual design characteristics that you'll want to be concerned with. And then I'm going to go to the final slide here in my example, and I'm going to uh, title this summary. And notice instead of just pasting, I can also type in. So you have a lot of flexibility in how you can add content to your lesson. You can also add audio using the media clip, and there's a variety of ways that you can incorporate audio into the lesson as well. So now that we have our have our main lesson content in there in this example, you'll notice that there's still one thing that we really need to address that, um, that we're adding content in, and that's the, the main title of the lesson. And so to do that, we'll return to the master slide uh, window. And remember, this was done as a global um, uh, perspective, global change in this lesson. So uh, I'm going to call this my e-learning lesson. When you're developing yours, you may want to use a little bit more meaningful title to describe what your lesson is going to be about. But this is going to be a, a demo to, to show you. And notice that this is really cool is that when you update it in one place, now it's updated across the entire lesson. It's a great time saving tip and a way to keep your lesson consistent and easily and increase the learnability of the lesson because students always know where to look, they know the sections of the screen to look for and what they're going to get in each section of that screen. In the next tutorial we're going to talk about updating the uh, menu navigation structure in the lesson so that you can that the learner can skip around and use that navigation to, to better find information and content within the lesson.